Welcome to The Secret Witch Show, the podcast providing a safe and alchemical altar space of conversations which help powerful women escape a half-hearted, spiritless society and rediscover the freedom of living a wildly magical life. Every other week, we explore how to cast aside the wounds of shame, guilt and fear connected with fully being yourself, so you can grant yourself permission to stop hiding, ground soulfully back into your body, illuminate your whole soul desires, tend your soul, rediscover and reclaim your powerful gifts, express your magic and manifest your wildest alchemy. There's no better place to become who your heart longs to be. This is where we will guide you into liberation. I'm your host, Nicole Barton, and I'm so excited to dive in. Hello, sensitive souls. My heart is so full for leading the second round of our Rosa Cruise Full at the moment, which is full to the brim of gorgeous, sensitive women. And I'm just pinching myself every day, really, at the work that I get to do in the world sometimes, uh, which is totally magical. We have got a special episode for you today, and just before we dive in fully, I would love to invite you to receive a free gift that our team has been working specially on, which is our beautiful full moon lunar news. This truly stunning email that they produce it fills my heart every time I read it each month and just provides a gorgeous roundup of all of our most potent content of which there is like a huge amount <laughs> to help you along your path of healing yourself and opening to your gifts as a healer teacher light worker or guide of others even if that feels terrifying and it also contains an invitation into a simple full moon release ritual too. If you are liking the sound of that, it is pure gold. So if you want to receive it, it will be going out soon to help you harness the archetypal energy of this moon. You can subscribe at www.nicolebarton.co.uk forward slash subscribe. On The Secret Witch Show today though, I am diving into the worldview that our body's physical sensations and symptoms are revealing hidden underlying patterns that want to be loved for deep self or soul healing. I explore the common lenses that contribute to this holistic health worldview, sharing my own embodied journey and experiences with what I've been guided to see by my own body's wisdom that's allowed me to heal myself over and over again and powerfully reclaim my soul path as a healer, teacher and guide. In this episode, I explore how to take responsibility for your own healing by listening to our body's deeper wisdom and I share the core elements required to self-illuminate your unconscious patterns and begin to manifest health and our heart's deeper desires and how the body is really guiding us into our soul's deeper plan as a healer. Let's dive in. Welcome magical ones to the episode you have chosen, how to discover the hidden underlying patterns causing your body's symptoms. This has been chosen by the women in our group, the sensitive souls, and I am so excited to talk to this topic this particular subject, when I was thinking about it and feeling into what to share today, is just one that I've got such a close relationship with that it's kind of hard to zoom out. It's like it's so ingrained, this wisdom in me and this knowing that there are hidden underlying patterns causing our body symptoms. It's really difficult <laughs> to actually go in and start to kind of distill like how to explain it. Um, so I am going to do my best. Um, but yeah, I just have such an embodied knowing of this. And I think very much around how I've created the archetype apothecary, it's like ingrained into the work that we do. Um, but there are, what I was thinking about, there are lots of different lenses about this idea that our bodies manifest symptoms due to emotional, even just due to emotional factors, if we if we take out, you know, everything else. I was thinking back on my own journey 
with this because it's something that I've been initiated into from a very, very young age, like right from the age of 10, um, possibly even before because my mum viewed the world in a very different way as well. But when I was 10, and I'll share more about that uh, in a moment, I was initiated into lots of different things. So particularly some of the kind of things that have initiated me into this work let's say, or that I've explored in my early initiations into this work, were things like Louise Hay, Heal Your Life. Of course, we cannot even come to this work without probably having any idea. (laughs) Well, we can actually, but I suspect most people listening um, may well have read Louise Hay's work. I mean, she, you know, she founded Hay House, um, which is, you know, a huge, phenomenal, um, amazing uh, publisher that has so many magical books. So it'd be hard not to know of her if you're in some kind of spiritual exploration. But her whole premise is really on the idea of metaphysics and how our bodies are really trying to tell us the kind of secret hidden messages. So there may be, if you're listening to this, this kind of basic understanding of like, yes, our body is telling us something. So for example, with Louise Hay, just as an example, if your back hurts, it may be the, the, the metaphysical reason for that is that you're carrying too much responsibility. That's like an example of what I would have learned as a very, very young child, which I think is why this is so ingrained for me. It's like, well, what? There are people who don't see this, <laughs> which isn't necessarily the listener, but some people in the world you know, who are very much embedded in our culture, which doesn't see it like this. It like, it hurt my head for a moment to think about how they don't see this. <laughs> so, so yeah, and maybe you don't too, and that's absolutely welcome. Um, but for me, it's just so second nature. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna dive in, but there's, there's uh, other things that uh, kind of influenced my journey as well and my understanding of this, which I'm gonna to talk to later in the episode, but things like manifestation, this, this idea that we're, that we're creating what we think, that's another thing that kind of relates and ties into this subject. I also trained in yin yoga, which is the, you know the idea of like somatic uh, movement and the issues being stored in our tissues. There's lots of kind of, paradigms lots of the in this world view about the body holding these underlying patterns that really make it clear that this isn't the only you know there's not just one this isn't just a random idea that somebody just thought of and gone yeah I think this is what's you know there's lots of different ancient wisdom bodies that explore this idea and Another example was my homeopathic training, which very much believes that there's this kind of mental, emotional, deeper underlying pattern that manifests the physical, which I'll talk more to later. And of course, archetypal remedies, uh, which is my unique modality in archetypal apothecary. So we work with archetypal remedies, which very much is grounded in this belief and this worldview that there are underlying patterns, often hidden, especially that's important. I'm going to talk to why that is more later, but they're often unconscious that cause our body symptoms. I think it's largely because they're so unconscious that it can be a challenge to actually see what's going on when we're experiencing um, body sensations or body um, expressions. And by body expressions, I'm talking about, you know, physical illnesses, physical um, challenges that we might be having from whatever they are, right, from fatigue to, you know, all sorts of um, imbalances, you know, womb symptoms or, you know, worse still, you know, deeper health challenges. Um, so it's, yeah, this is something that I've had a lot of experience in, a lot of embodied experience in throughout my life. And... I think what's clear as as we dive in is just to be clear that this is a very holistic perspective. It's like a very holistic worldview. There's this kind of mind, body, spirit, soul connection. If you're listening to this, it's likely you already have a sense that there's something more than just the kind of quick fixes from doctors. And that's not to make doctors wrong at all, because I think some of the work that doctors do in today's uh, modern society where they're saving lives, is deeply important but my embodied experience is that that's not just how health works there's a whole kind of wisdom of of like ancient wisdom you know that that shows us that there's for, for our everyday health 
it's not just about going to get a sticky fi- a sticky plaster from the doctor it's about like the fact that we can actually control our health we are we can choose our health and this is something I learned very early on as I said so my own journey was when I was age 10 and I was as I would call it now initiated into physical this understanding about physical health and I had chronic fatigue so I manifested I'm going to say that word very intentionally and I'll explain why later I manifested illness because that might seem like quite a radical stance but I had complete exhaustion I couldn't walk but I also at the same time knew that there was something more and and maybe not at age 10 but this happened to me several times in my life and both times I've seen more and more and more about it and the second time was when I really started to see as a conscious adult what was truly going on and liberate that pattern I think the first time I healed and liberated you know thanks to um, my mum taking me to all these um, amazing healers but it was when I became an adult that I really started to become conscious of the underlying patterns but essentially I was initiated age 10 I couldn't walk I was so fatigued I was a deeply sensitive child and I guess I had quite an unusual childhood from that respect. I wrote a post the other day where I was reminiscing on how I had missed school and for a year when I was in this kind of ill health initiation where I couldn't walk, I was exhausted. And that year, my mum and my my granny took me to all the magical holistic healers they could possibly find. And I thought about this because at at time, even until recently, I kind of felt a victim to the fact that I was ill and missed school, as if I'd missed out on something very important as part of our culture. And yet, what I came to see when I was reflecting on it the other day was like, wow, what an opportunity, what an initiation into who I am as a, you know, a healer, to have had a year to explore at that tender young age of 10, to explore magic. And magic really was what healed me. And I've always believed that. And I've started to see at that point that the body was more complex than we know. And I see now when I look back, and this is what I mean by what I've reclaimed since, you know, since the second bout of um, fatigue and exhaustion, was that that was me really being initiated into seeing the underlying patterns that I was deeply sensitive it was a call from my body into honouring my sensitive body, honouring my sensitive soul, illuminating the hidden underlying pattern that I was sensitive and needed to honour that. And yet I ignored it at the time and I later ignored it again because I hadn't seen that really consciously. You know, we have to sometimes go through these initiations, but essentially my body was calling me very wisely to slow down and meet my sensitive needs. And it was homeopathy really that grounded me into the lens that are fully truly in an embodied way I mean that our bodies are manifesting mental emotional spiritual issues because that's essentially how homeopathy works is it works on often people will inter, you know interact with homeopathy um, because they have some kind of physical challenge that's typically actually homeopathy isn't that well known but when people do know they tend to see it as this energetic medicine and it's one of the ancient wisdom bodies of my archetypal apothecary path so it's an important one to digest and understand we work with it very differently in this path there's no taking of pills like in traditional homeopathy but typically women will or people in general will go to a homeopath because they have some kind of physical issue what they don't realize is that those physical issues are actually being prescribed on the whole, not always, there are some therapeutics, but it's it's generally the whole system and body of work works on the idea that mental emotional symptoms are are expressing in physical ways. So when we go to a homeopath for physical issues, what we're actually doing is peeling back that layer and revealing the mental, emotional, um, spiritual parts of ourselves that need reclamation. And it's through journeying with that remedy, taking that remedy, that these things start to bubble up. And I remember when I was journeying with homeopathy myself, I would take a remedy and I would have some kind of emotional, because I was particularly sensitive, I'd have some kind of emotional reaction. It, pretty much every time I took it, I worked quite with quite high potency remedies. Every time I would take a remedy, I'd have this outburst, <laughs> like a particular theme. And it was revealing to me, that's not always how it works, by the way, just to caveat that. But for me, and I think particularly because homeopathy kind of formed my medicine, 
um, and was, is the foundation of it all. Like I would have this pretty unique explosion where I'd be essentially proving the remedy and, and the underlying patterns would basically be shoved in my face by, <laughs> by me expressing them. Um, so yeah, just to caveat, that isn't how homeopathy always works, but when it does work like that, it's called um, often a return of old symptoms or a healing response or something like that. And I think because of my medicine being the way it is, it was particularly unique to me that I'd have that experience because I am essentially here to channel the remedies, which I can talk a bit more about later. But essentially, there's this real link there in that we are you know, manifesting physically, and I'll talk more about that as well, but these mental, emotional, spiritual issues or the, the fragmented parts of our soul, as I might describe it another way. And then after that, um, after that journey, which homeopathy healed me twice, both of those times of exhaustion, I then off, went off into a spiritual ascension world for a little while where it took me up into seeing, you know, we the world of thought, the realm of thought, and how we how thought creates our reality in essence and that it's all just thought and there's this like spiritual part of us this kind of bigger part of us we're, we're essentially part of something more intelligent part of the natural intelligence of life the greater intelligence you could say the universe so i explored all of that um which actually had me kind of pop out of my body for a little while because i was like oh wow we're part of this natural intelligence of life and so we don't really need our bodies it's all just thought i completely misunderstood it and went off into this kind of world of spiritual ascension or spiritual bypassing as some people might call it and completely ignored my body for a while and during that time i manifested all sorts of tension and also a paralyzed face now again when we think about splitting from the body and, and which can't really happen but you know when, when I was bouncing out of my body into this spiritual land I then created an actual paralysis in my face which again is like a you know great way of seeing like when we numb our bodies we create paralysis and that's really what that showed me and so I found myself with this happened just as I was giving birth and also created a really traumatic birth experience by not being in my power which again I'll speak more to because it sounds like a quite a radical statement but this whole thing was like a call back into the body and again it's, it's very interesting that I kind of went off out of my body. I think it's because at the time I was experiencing some trauma, which tends to have us avoid our bodies. But as we start to come down into our bodies and listen to our bodies, that is where the patterns get revealed. So this work of descending back into soul, descending back into the body, was what really helped me to actually start to reconnect with my body's wisdom, start to illuminate more patterns. So when we talk about how really the invitation overall as a whole is the deepest work is to listen to your body and that's what I started to do and I'm going to talk a little bit more to the specifics of that because that's making it sound way easier than it actually is <laughs> um, but through going back into the body I was able to heal my face and that just really didn't seem possible because the mainstream medicine system um, had told me that it wasn't healable, that I would never have movement in my face again. But, and, and that was possible, that was what I healed through these, through really listening to my body. But what it showed me was that I wasn't standing in my power. So another pattern was illuminated around like I'd been giving my power away to the universe like oh well the universe will give it to me if I just make a wish so that was really a call back into the wisdom of my body the power contained in the wisdom of my body and was another way of another pattern being illuminated by this numbness in my face some other examples that I think are probably clearer um, of how this this kind of manifestation of health can happen this physical um, manifestation of deeper unconscious patterns can happen um, I think there's one that where I had gestational diabetes in pregnancy which was very much revealing where I wasn't eating to suit my body and after that once I became you know aware of and conscious of these underlying patterns I was able to then choose to go vegan and gluten-free and eat in alignment with my body's wisdom um, another example is at age seven, which I saw through a feminine uh, soul reclamation. I saw that I'd had this early on experience, age seven, where 
Um, and it was literally a, the most perfect example. Um, it's quite a vulnerable thing to share, but there was a time where um, I was um, abused, sexually abused by uh, a GP. And that was age seven. And the next appointment I had, I remember I remember actually just being terrified and running around the room, but I, I saw the notes on the system when I went into recently, when all, all our uh, medical notes are put onto the system and I saw the notes and age seven when I'd had pneumonia and had the home visit where um, I was abused. Then the, the, the time after, the visit after, I had gone to the doctors for cystitis. Now, when we think again about the where that manifested in the body, we can clearly see a link between abuse and cystitis, some, some kind of feminine manifestation of uh, physical physical but mental and emotional trauma that's probably the clearest example of how that how that has manifested um likewise my womb you know my womb has talked to me a lot I have womb healing I go in and I really commune with my womb that's another way that we work in the path actually in the archetypal apothecary path of like really connecting to our bodies is by connecting to our womb, starting that conversation with our womb, which may sound really odd, you know, particularly if you are listening and you aren't aware of this kind of mind, body, soul um, connection, it might sound really strange to begin to commune with your womb. But again, like I had endometriosis uh, symptoms where I had experienced that abuse that I'd numbed and that was again revealing these deeper patterns. I also had like an eating disorder which again was revealing where I needed to love myself more so each kind of physical illness I have ever had when I've looked at it from the lens of I'm going to say owning my power to create health because really that is what all of this path that we're talking about is calling women into and really like that's the way that is the way to to heal it's every single illness that I've had has revealed to me what underlying belief or pattern is needing to be healed and how that is creating illness and it really just feels like just just even that feels like it's so important like it shows you the importance of this wisdom of seeing our power to create health that's quite a radical statement in and of itself because it can also feel like a hell of a responsibility when we start to begin to see our power to create health. And I'm gonna talk more to that and explain what I mean about that uh, a little bit later. But just to briefly share, um, my guide, I remember my guide once asking me during this kind of time of soul reclamation, she said, why are you creating this? When I said to her about my paralyzed face and at the time that quite shocked me. <laughs> Cause even though I've been grounded in all of this, I was like, what do you mean? I'm not creating this, you know, I'm a victim to my health, <laughs> you know? Um, and I was quite triggered for some time. And that was really difficult for me to, like get my head around and to navigate and to take that ownership because it's so easy to feel like a victim to our physical health to our physical body particularly when there is something that's been created that looks impossible to uncreate for example my numb face like absolutely I thought that was it for the rest of time the right hand side of my face was going to be completely numb and I had no, even though I'd been initiated in all of these things and I had such a deep belief in them, I was like, this is the one thing. This is the one thing that I cannot heal. And I'd already got a degree of like knowing that we can choose our health, we can create our health. And that knowing that our physical body is pointing us to things that want deeper healing, these underlying patterns. But I had no like idea of possibility at that point. Um, And it was really a reclamation of coming to see that I was choosing to create that. And that's going to sound so radical potentially. But when we operate, especially like when we're operating from that more mundane worldview, it's, it's innocent. It's understandable because that's what we're taught. We're not taught that we create health, that we can create health by healing and revealing the underlying patterns that are maintaining the physical symptoms. And really that is the crux of it. Like that is the invitation here is to 
begin to listen to our bodies so that we can see what patterns they're revealing so that we can love ourselves and meet ourselves in those unconscious, often unconscious, sometimes conscious, but often unconscious patterns that are really calling for love through our bodies. That's essentially what's happening because our body is only ever revealing the deeper wisdom. It's revealing to us what we need to listen to, what we need to hear, what we need to open to seeing more about. And it will reveal patterns, but ever so subtly sometimes. Sometimes not so subtly, sometimes it will shout, but sometimes they can be really subtle patterns. And especially in a society where we don't value the kinds of subtle communications from our bodies, this is so important. Like we really need to be in tune with our bodies. Some women can also be so in tune with their bodies that they're like over um, emphasizing every little tiny sensation, which can also be the flip side of the of the shadow of that. And in that case, we also still need to hear our wisdom, but not get caught up in the fear that's making us kind of analyze all of the different um, communications from our bodies. So there's a, there's a little caveat there, but in essence, it's learning to listen to our body's deeper wisdom beyond the fear. And that can be quite challenging because there's often a lot of fear that will come in for women as they even think about going into their bodies, let alone going into their bodies to hear what they've got to say and to begin to illuminate some of the unconscious patterns that are manifesting, not just even physical things, but unconscious patterns that are manifesting things that we don't want in our lives. Um, you know, manifesting life in a way that we don't um, feel is aligned. Um, so the how, how do we begin this? Well, ultimately what we're talking about is one of the eight elements of the archetypal apothecary path, which is self-illumination. And that is the deeper invitation here. But there are also other elements of the archetypal apothecary path that feel important in that part, in that self-illumination journey. Firstly, ah, we have to breathe. <laughs> we have to breathe. We have to open. We have to open ourselves to like this more magical worldview of body symptoms. We have to be open to go in with love. We have to open to having the courage to journey into our bodies through the fear. We have to have love for ourselves or our body just won't reveal anything. And so one of the remedies that I uh, guide women into, um, and if you're wondering what I mean by archetypal remedies, is essentially we work in this path with what I call archetypal remedies, which are like lenses. They're like spirit guides, but also remedies that are like energetic transmissions that help you to with the self-illumination journey in essence there. Um, so for example, Archetypal Rosa is the, is the remedy that helps women open and soften and go in with love. And that's because the rose really is a universal symbol of being able to soften, being able to open, being able to, you know, um, bloom in, in, and open through fear. So they're like mirrors in essence. Um, but yeah, ultimately, for self-illumination, for going into the body, we have to be open. So it's the first thing to know. And again, that ties in very, very much to having courage. Like this is a journey that really um, calls for us to have courage, to be able to illuminate the true unconscious patterns, the true underlying patterns that are having us, uh, having our bodies speak to us in this way. Now, the other part that I have alluded to and that's really important in the journey is very much about embodying our power, embodying our power to heal ourselves this way, because really that is what this is about. Like as we start to listen to our bodies and illuminate these patterns, the deeper reason why we would do that is because this is the way of self-healing. We're used to giving our power away to doctors, to even healers, you know, even spiritual healers, we can give our power away and be like, fix us, you know, give me some Reiki, just sort this one out. And it's the it's really the illumination of our physicals, of our body sensations, and the underlying um, kind of, uh, the underlying patterns that help us to heal ourselves. So it's really the gold of doing this, is really the why of doing this. But in essence, it requires us to own our power to heal ourselves. 
When we talk about that in terms of archetypal remedies, archetypal aurum, which is gold, is about embodying our power. You think of the shiny gold, like what does shiny goldness represent to you? It represents power, sovereignty. You know, the queen or the king wear gold. It's like about owning our power so that we can fully see what wants to be revealed. That's what archetypal gold will do. It will activate this powerful part of you that helps you to own your power. And largely it will also do that by revealing things through your body. So this, this whole thing is what we're teaching in this, in this modality, but in just to kind of break it down so that you can work with it. Uh, yeah, power, power reclamation is so important to be able to um, help us go into our bodies. Often, again, it's like going with that, that understanding that women can feel quite scared that our bodies will reveal something that we don't want to know. And so there's a degree of like owning our power to be able to hold that, to be able to listen to our bodies that is required in order to be able to fully listen and heal the underlying patterns. And of course, embodiment is another uh, aspect or element, um, one of the eight elements. These are all one of the, these are all um, elements of the archetypal apothecary path that we're talking about now. But yeah, going into the body, embodiment, going into the body to listen, all our archetypal remedies work with this. And really that is the most important step is this communion with our body. And there are ways that we can work with that. There are embodiment practices. Um, so like I was talking to earlier, you know, listening to your womb, having a dialogue with parts of your body, like womb, what do you want to show me? What do you want to reveal to me? Or, you know, if you've got a pain in your back, like tell me what what is it that you want to reveal to me? Like this is opening to that, to communing with our bodies is really so important there's like a you know if I was going to do this as like a a program maybe I should maybe, <laughs> maybe this should be a program in and of its, its own right it feels like so core to the work but like I would be inviting women into like you know opening their hearts doing a cost and benefits of like what is it are we really ready to see these hidden pat patterns like this would be my this would be my um three-step process I'd be like all right open to the patterns let's see what's here to to be revealed and then i would probably if if i was choosing consciously once i'd done the cost and benefits of that like i would be inviting women into a ritual to call in you know um to call in guidance in going into the body and particularly um archetypal rosa is a beautiful remedy to work with for this that's very much about embodiment um but yeah, listening into the body, calling calling that in, like really creating a ritual. It can be as simple as you like, but for me, I would, I would maybe go to my tree and like speak out my intention. Like I really want to see an underlying pattern here around my body. I call in my guides. I call in the archetypal remedies that I want to work with that are going to help me with this. And I create this beautiful ceremony to, to let spirit know that this is my devotion. This is something I guide women to, into in this path, um, but I'm just breaking it down as an example. And then I would engage in embodiment practices. So anything that is going to help me to listen to my body, maybe a womb massage with some rose oil um, or, you know, anything that's going to help me tune in and begin the process of communing with my body. If there was something that I was particularly suffering with, say my womb, I would do a womb massage. I would be very still or go into my heart I'd really listen for the nudges and those nudges can show up in all sorts of ways they can show up through signs and synchronicities they can show up through um you know hearing think downloads from your body they can show up in you know you might write a letter to your body um or there's all sorts of ways that we can receive and, it, and this is why the opening part of you know the roses medicine of opening to seeing what's revealed is so important I'm kind of going off on a tangent now i was meant to be just talking about embodiment <laughs> But, but in essence, embodiment is crucial as a how of, you know, beginning to heal these patterns. And again, when you're doing that, begin to note down, maybe journal what it is that is being revealed to you around like what your body is showing you. And don't write it off as like stupid or, oh, well, I've just made that up. Just capture whatever comes to you. Um, for example, your body might say, oh, well, you know, I need more of this, or I, you know, just capture everything 
in maybe you have like an embodiment journal or a body journal that that's um like helping you to start to peel these patterns back now what i've just described is uh very clearly not very logical um, many other modalities will approach this kind of work in a logical more culturally accepted way the way that i've just described is full-on magic and ritual <laughs> um which i know people can resist but um, yeah, that's that's the way that, that this works. You know, these remedies are magical remedies. They have their own spirit. And we're here really to listen into the body. So Louise Hay, for example, was much more logical in this approach, although it was still classed as very um, uh, new age when she created it. There's kind of this like catch-all explanation that, that Louise Hay will have. She'll kind of tell you for you what... Um, what your body parts are, are telling you so like for example with your back like you know your back means that you're suff you're suffering with over responsibility that's a, a diagnosis in effect like much of the mundane world's way of working with these things because that is helpful on one level because for people who are maybe early on in that journey and they're like oh this is interesting it's like a, it's a lens that opens them again we talk about opening it's like a, a rosa opening to this kind of work but there's a depth to it when we start to really fully embody it for un uncovering the deeper underlying patterns. And that's the, that's the invitation here is the deeper invitation is to come to know your own wisdom. Like what does your body want to tell you? Yes, there may be common lenses that are re relevant, but your body is unique and it will speak to you of the underlying patterns that it's trying to reveal to you. And the thing is that we have to do is listen without this kind of logical um, explanation seeking. Like this is the world of the unknown and we have to enter it in order for our bodies to commune with us, to reveal those patterns. And that can feel really scary sometimes. Again, like um, if I'm thinking about logical, the, the archetypal remedy that we'd be working with is silica. It's, it likes a very logical, like, um, wrapped in a box kind of unique way of, you know, like common way of understanding things and I'm doing my best to put archetypal apothecary into that box <laughs> in, so, in a way that makes sense because it is a magical modality um but yeah just to honor and acknowledge that that can be a scary journey to go into the unknown and begin to open yourself up to that and that's why sometimes the other thing that I say when we think about how is that sometimes that can be best journeyed with a guide. Now that's not necessarily needed. So you can you can begin this work um, by yourself. But the reason why I say it can be best done supported because is because some of these patterns that are underlying may not want to be seen. This is one of the reasons why I work in the way I do uh, in terms of leading group programs and also working one-to-one -one with women is because some of these patterns can be really blooming hard to look at. For example, I was constantly creating illness. I would create illness all the time. And as I started to peel back the layers, this was with my guide, and look at really what was happening, this deep underlying pattern. And at the time, and since I, I now call this kind of looking at the kinky pleasures that I was getting from this, was that every time I was ill, the underlying pattern was that was having me create it that way was I received love and attention every time I was ill. And that was why innocently I was creating illness. And I could not have seen that by myself. It's like impossible. I just never would have seen it because I wouldn't have been prepared to look there and I wouldn't have even known how to look there. By the way, I would recommend Carolyn Elliott's book if that resonates. It's uh, about, all about kinky pleasures. But these kind of underlying what she calls kinky pleasure patterns are really hard to spot ourselves. So yeah, it may be that you want to take um, a supported route with that. Like I say, there's a lot, our group crucibles really are all offering the embodiment in this, the, the spotting of the deeper underlying patterns that helps us to truly heal. And I do work one-to-one -one with women with this as well. So those are options, or there may be other women, other people, other leaders, other guides that you relate to that you want to engage in um, similar work, although it's obviously very different to the work we do here. 
as well. So there may be um, a call in your heart to some deeper support, in which case that's also really, really a good how of doing this. But there's, um, there's another part that I want to speak to as well, and this is another one of the eight elements of the Archetypal Apothecary Path, and that is understanding the true laws of manifestation. Now I say the true laws of manifestation because this really is key to the whole premise of underlying patterns causing body symptoms and explains about owning our power. So I say true very intentionally, the true laws of manifestation, because by true, I mean that much other work of manifestation can share that we just go and make wishes for what we want. We just have to think about what we want and we'll manifest it. And it's like, there's a sense of like, we have to do, we have to go out, make our vision boards, and then we will just manifest. We sit back and wait for for manifestation, the universe to help us. And that isn't what I came to see during, particularly during my spiritual ascension part of the journey was that this isn't how manifestation really works. There's actually nothing to do to manifest. Now that might sound for some some women quite shocking. For others who are in a spiritual ascension path, they'd be like, okay, well like, yeah, I get that. Um, but we're essentially already creating. And this is an important distinction. I think I've done podcasts on this particularly um, like in, in essence um, in the past as well, but it's a really, really important distinction that we're already creating. So we're not needing to manifest, although there is a, you know, a, a, a talk you know, that I teach about harnessing our focus so that we are creating consciously. But the key part here is to see that largely what is happening is we are creating unconsciously. I'm going to pause there because that's really, really important. Because the reason, the core reason we are manifesting physical symptoms is because we are unconsciously creating them. And that is because of this underlying unconscious pattern that wants to be seen. So this here is a core reason that we have health issues because we're creating unconsciously what we don't want based on the unconscious patterns that we hold which manifest in the body. So it's a really, really important part of understanding and the journey into how we can start to understand. And it, and it also illustrates why it's so important to do that work, like why we need to go in and heal ourselves and learn to heal ourselves and reveal these unconscious patterns. And also another another important part is, um, you know, we talk about the soul plan. So I've been developing an archetypal soul reading, which kind of ties everything together because there's like four different layers of archetypal remedies that we're all here to work with. Um, the first one being who we're born as, our birth constitution. The second one being our soul remedy. We all have a soul remedy that we were born to serve in this world if we're, if we're here to be healers uh, or a gift, a particular gift. Um, And then there's surface wounds, which are the wounds that are blocking us from living our gift. And there's ancestral wounds, which are the wounds that are blocking us from also blocking us from living our gifts. And the reason why I'm sharing that is that we come here and and when we have our soul plan kind of mapped out for us, we can clearly see like where where the patterns are, are likely to be. But we come here with a particular wound to live out, with a particular set of wounds to live out, with a particular set of remedy states or wounds to live out and there are particular gifts in those wounds and that's really helpful to know because these remedies offer a lens of beginning to see those particular patterns i'm going to explain a little bit more what i mean about that because each of those each of these soul remedy states so for example you could be born as a phosphoric constitution uh, which means that you're you know you're born this beautiful open sensitive little soul who like has these gifts these magical gifts who um tends to be a people pleaser fears abandonment can be anxious easily overwhelmed all of these things that make up the phosphorus um constitution that t- that can be who you're born as um you might be here with a, a soul remedy that's um something different largely that is the case um so that could be say pulsatilla you're here to alchemize the um 
the fear of fear of abandonment maybe you were abandoned in your um early childhood and you're here to heal and alchemize that so that you can pass that medicine on to others there will be other surface wounds that are stopping you from doing that these are the things that we serve in the group crucibles things like rosa gold uh she wolf luna moon um these are the remedies that are needing healing um, in order to live out our gifts and then there's the ancestral ones as well which I won't go into too much but things like the witch wound that sort of thing and in essence it's helpful to just have that as a lens because each of those remedies and and everybody has their own unique pattern of remedies and so that this is why I've created this soul map to help people essentially map out and have a clear view of their soul path it's like a soul reading but it's, it's helpful to know from a remedy perspective that each of these particular remedies has a different underlying mental emotional pattern and can be used to, and worked with to see and illuminate the patterns. Um, so it's like really clear. And again, this has come from a lot of my homeopathic lineage homeopathy makes it really clear as do the archetypal remedies how mental emotionals are linked to uh, physical um, symptoms. So I'm going to explore a little bit about homeopathy because it's really helpful. But each of our soul remedy states and our archetypal soul, rem soul remedies, um, each of our sorry archetypal remedy states hold physical expressions, and that's not something I talk about very often. So I'm going to just break it down a little bit homeopathically because I think that's helpful. Because each remedy, homeopathically or archetypally, will show up in our physical health. So just as the, as the example, we talk to the phosphoric personality, and we talk about that a lot in this path, because women do tend to be, that's not always the case, phosphoric personalities. So this is the deeply sensitive, deeply open, like bright-eyed, radiant, like runs around being the centre of attention when she's a little girl until she gets older and burns out. But people pleasing fears abandonment can be anxious uh, she's got these magical gifts like clairvoyance all the other clairs and is very creative will push herself to get things done but lacks boundaries particularly around her sensitivity so that's the picture of phosphorus that was what that is what i would call a call a phosphoric state now phosphorus in in a wounded state if we need to work with phosphorus as a remedy will manifest ill health she'll manifest particularly uniquely to phosphorus she will manifest burnout like my story earlier i'm phosphoric both in uh, my constitution and in my soul remedy so i'm here to activate phosphoric women so my um great my story about ill health and burnout is a great example of phosphorus phosphorus is what's on the end of a match it's deeply sensitive it burns into fire and into flames immediately upon like being struck and will just burn out in a wounded state so this manifestation of burnout is one of the unique expressions of health that's unique to the phosphorus picture it's what i would call a phosphoric state someone with phosphoric patterning that is manifesting as a phosphorus wounded expression. They might also experience other things like respiratory things, chest things. I had a lot of um, chest infections as a child. Um, I had pneumonia as a child. I had a lot of nosebleeds as a child, a lot of stomach problems, musculoskeletal things, urogenital issues. Often these kinds of things are seen in the phosphor phosphorus picture. So if we're having the experience of those things, they will be pointing us to a deeper underlying pattern of phosphorus. For example, like with my burnout, that was very much, and I, this is how I see it now through this lens, is like that was my initiation into my healthy phosphorus, into owning this kind of, this deeper pattern, this unconscious pattern that I was ignoring my deep sensitivity. It was a call to reclaim the beautiful gift of sensitivity in phosphorus. The beautiful gift of sensitivity being also what allows me to be a magical healer. So these physical expressions of phosphorus were having me see this underlying pattern so that I could reclaim the gold of becoming a healer because that's what phosphorus is here for typically and that's just a great example and I'm gonna finish shortly but I just wanted to share that because uh, it's not something I talk of regularly 
that each archetypal remedy we work with in this path has its own unique expression of physical health and illness. That's why it's so helpful to work with them because by doing so, we are illuminating their personality patterns, the mental, emotional, spiritual, hidden underlying patterns that manifest in this particularly physical way. And what this illuminates really overall is just how there are hidden patterns of health, hidden layers of health that the logical mind or the culture we live in maybe can't understand. And I've provided some ways to begin to open to that. So I'd love to hear how you journey with those if you do choose to go into that. If you want to be uh, going into that in a supported way, um, check out our website to see what crucibles we have at the time of um, release of this episode. I believe that we'll be going into Archetypal Aurum, which is about power reclamation in January. So that might be one for you to check out. But ultimately, whatever you choose whether to journey alone or to journey is supported like this is deeply important work and it's really the why of why i've combined the three ancient wisdom bodies of homeopathy archetypal psychology and energy work energy work because i channel the remedies rather than getting you to take them you know archetypes alone don't consider the physicals like homeopathy does. Homeopathy doesn't offer the kind of personality profiling as shadow work that we gain from, you know, the conscious self-illumination that we gain from archetypal work. Energy work has the spirit guidance, but it misses the psychological personality profiling. So this potent combination of these three ancient wisdom bodies passed down from, you know, these wise people these wise ancient magical people they in combination are just like super powered and they're super powered you know in terms of like they can also superpower other modalities that you may have journeyed with already this is like a complementary therapy a complementary healing modality that helps you to really fully go into your body see what's there and be able to work with the underlying patterns for self-healing so that you can express your gift and uh, yeah I'm going to leave that there because it just feels so juicy and so alive and um, yeah my invitation is to begin the journey wherever you are tenderly slowly stay open to learning more stay open to what is going to be revealed by your wisdom open to hear your body wisdom And if you'd like to do that in a supported way, then join us in our crucibles. I'm sending you all the love and I will speak to you next time. In some ways, that felt like quite a complex episode. (laughs) So I'm going to do my best to sum it up. Here are my takeaways. The holistic worldview of the body is one that widely accepts that there are hidden patterns under our body's symptoms. Right from the early days, Louise Hay illuminated that, and yet, often this wisdom is still journeyed with from a quick fix perspective. Our physical symptoms or sensations are usually calling us into some form of initiation. They're an invitation into seeing what we need to feel, heal or reveal and owning our power to do so. And that can feel like a lot of responsibility at first, but it's so worth it. Self-illumination is how we discover these patterns. We have to open to the journey of hearing our bodies, love ourselves enough to have the courage to go there amidst the fear, embody our power and go into the body to truly listen. And all of our archetypal remedies help women do this. What's also key is understanding the true laws of manifestation. So often these are related to as if we have to make a wish and ask the universe to provide something. Yet the truth is we are already creating health, just largely unconsciously. This is usually the reason we have physical symptoms because we've been creating what we don't want without knowing based on wounding. Healing is making that process conscious so we can create differently by healing that wounding. We each came here with a soul plan, 
a group of remedies to live out, if you like, with set physical manifestations and patterns. And the work we do in this path of mapping out our soul path with archetypal remedies helps us to reveal where our healing is, because each of them holds a mirror to the particular patterning of health, including physicals. For example, archetypal phosphorus, which is very much who the the typical listener of this show is, is the energy of the substance on the end of a match. Those remedies tend to physically burn out because they're wildly sensitive, like fire, which illuminates how we need to honour our sensitivity. Burnout equals the manifestation of the deeper underlying pattern of not honouring our sensitivity and comes in to show us this. If you'd like to get the show notes and links for everything we've chatted about in this episode, head to www.secretwitch.co.uk. If you know a secret witch who would love this episode, please share with them to help them liberate themselves. And so you don't miss out on next week's episode, head to your podcast app of choice and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.